watched. So far, you've seen me this year only in front of your classroom, but today I'm getting my hands a little bit dirty on the car behind me. This is my summer driven car only. It's a 2008 BMW 335 and I've done a ton of work to it. The car makes about 550 horsepower. And if you want to reference that, that's like three Honda Civics. But with all that horsepower, there comes a lot of maintenance. And today we're learning about volume. So while we learn about volume, I want to introduce you to a concept that's extremely applicable to the car behind me. If you've heard of a turbocharger, you might know what I'm talking about. But in case you haven't, a turbocharger is a device on an engine that puts more air into the engine faster so that you can make more power. The only problem with this is when you compress air, it gets really tight and really hot. So when it gets hot, you lose power. Cold air is where the power is. In order to combat that, we use one of these. This is called an intercooler. And what happens, the hot air goes in one side of the intercooler, runs all the way down the intercooler core, and comes out the other side much cooler so that when it reaches your engine, it contains more power. The only problem with an intercooler like that is, when you start adding a lot more go-go juice to the car and want it to go faster, a small intercooler isn't enough to keep the cold air cold anymore. So what do we do? We get something way bigger, way stronger, and way better at cooling that air. Behold, the intercooler rated for 1,000 horsepower. The air will go in one side, super hot from the turbochargers, all the way through this core, and come out the other side much cooler than it ever could on something this small. So what we're going to do is measure the volume of each intercooler and compare it to see just how much better this one is. Let's do it. All right, so we've got the small intercooler here on the bench and we're going to calculate the volume of the small intercooler. Remember, it's important with the turbocharged engine to get as much air as possible in that intercooler so that you get that nice, cold, fresh air to your engine to make the most power possible. So let's start with our formula. For the formula of the volume of a shape like this, we're going to treat it just like a rectangular prism. We've got these funky ends here, but that's just where the air goes in and out. It's not really where the air is actually cooled. So it's important to remember the only area or the only space that the air will be cooled is along this aluminum looking core. So that's what we're going to measure. Now the volume of a prism is just the area of the base, which is the length times the width, times the height. That will give us our volume. And we're going to use the metric system, so we'll measure in centimeters cubed. Three dimensions in centimeters make centimeters cubed. So let's go ahead and measure. First, we want the length. We'll take the measuring tape here, put it all the way along the top, and it looks like we're right around 51 centimeters. So we'll say 51 centimeters. Now we need the width. So we're going to multiply by the width, get the measuring tape out again, and we'll measure here. I'll do it so you can see it. We'll measure the width across the top, which is right on the money, 11 centimeters. It's 11 centimeters wide, so we'll multiply 51 by 11 centimeters. Now we've got the length, we've got the width, now we need the height. So that's going to be this way. We'll measure from the bottom of the core all the way to the top, and it looks like we're right around 12 centimeters. So now we have to multiply by 12 centimeters. Okay, so now that we've got our calculator here, we can actually do this calculation. So 51 centimeters, we'll put in 51 into our calculator, multiplied by 11 centimeters, multiplied by 12, and hit enter. We get an answer of 6,732 centimeters cubed. That's the size of this intercooler core. So now that we have the size, we can compare it to the size of the other one and see how much better our upgrade is going to be. Okay, so now we have the big intercooler on the bench. Obviously this thing's 
way bigger, but we want to find out exactly how much bigger it is. This time we have to split our volume calculation into two because there's a thick bottom part of the core and then there's a thin level two step at the top. And we're gonna to have to measure them both, calculate the volume of both of them and add the volumes together to make sure that we measure the whole shape because obviously there isn't really a formula to measure something that's shaped like this. So we'll do it in two separate parts. First, we'll measure the higher stepped part. And in order to do that, I'll just turn it around. So let's go ahead and look at the core. It starts down here at this weld and goes all the way down to this weld. So we're gonna measure from side to side along the core and it looks like it is 49, 49 centimeters. So actually it's a little bit narrower than the original one. So let's go ahead and put our volume equals length times width times height. And we're going to say our first volume is 49 centimeters long. So now we want to know how wide it is. Wide would be the thickness. So I'll measure this again so that you can see. And that appears like it's about, let's round up and say eight centimeters thick. So at the top, oops, the top, it's actually a little bit thinner again than the stock intercooler core, eight centimeters. Now we need the height, and this is where it's really gonna be an advantage to have the aftermarket intercooler, because the height is obviously quite a bit bigger than the stock intercooler. And of course, we're looking here, instead of the original 12 centimeters, it's at a whopping 28 centimeters, over double. centimeters so now we can find the volume of that part 49 centimeters times 8 centimeters times 28 so the front of the intercooler already is way bigger than the stock intercooler at 10,976 centimeters cubed and it's only going to get bigger because we just measured the front part now we have to add the back part on so we'll flip it back around and now we're going to measure this section only. So the width should be the exact same, or the length rather. The length is exactly 49 centimeters like it was before. So let's put our formula in again, length times width times height. And the length is still 49 centimeters. Now the width is going to be this thickness. Might be a little difficult to show you here, but we'll try. And it is a little over 11 centimeters. Let's round up to 12, 12 centimeters thick. And now we need the height. And the height at the front was really big, but this one is stepped down, so it should be quite a bit smaller. So we'll measure from the bottom all the way up to here, and it is 15 centimeters tall. So we'll put in 15 centimeters. So even the height of the bottom part is higher than the height of the stock intercooler, which is right here. So even the height of this bottom part is actually higher than the stock one by itself. So definitely a lot bigger all the way around. Let's go ahead and look at the volume of that part. So we have 49 times 12 times 15, the volume of that second part is 8,820 centimeters cubed. So now we need to add this volume and this volume together to get a total volume. So we'll add 10,976 plus 8,820 is equal to, wow, 19,796 centimeters cubed for a total volume. When we compare that to the original intercooler that was only 6,732 centimeters cubed, it appears that this intercooler 
is at least three times the size in terms of volume. All right, so as you can see, my arm is literally shaking trying to hold this upgraded intercooler. But if we look at it with the small intercooler in front and we refer back to those dimensions we just got, this one, right around 6,500, 6,700, I think, centimeters cubed. And that's about six or seven liters if you convert it to liters. So this will hold about six or seven liters of air, whereas this King will hold 19 liters. So 19,000 centimeters cubed of air. That means we can cool air down a lot faster, way more efficiently, and this car will be faster yet again for next summer. Thank you for listening, and I hope this helped.